But there was this battle over the use of the term universal bishop. It was not used of the Bishop of Rome until Boniface III acquired this term. But the history of how he became universal bishop, which means that he's the head of the church, he's the universal overseer of all the church, and he's the head of the church. That's why the Westminster Confession of Faith states that there is no head of the church but Jesus Christ. He is the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, and not the Pope of Rome, who is that Antichrist who sits in the temple of God. Talks about Gregory the Great, servant of servants of God, Bishop of Rome from 590 to 604, had some pertinent words on this matter. The patriarch John IV of Constantinople had claimed the title of universal bishop. Now, this is before the Pope of Rome claimed the title of universal bishop to himself, but the patriarch in Constantinople said, I am the universal bishop, and Henry T. Hudson goes on to state that, and Gregory was prompted to declare that such a title was, quote, blasphemous, unchristian, and diabolical by whomsoever assumed. Blasphemous, un anti Christian, and diabolical. In 606, 607 AD, depending on the time. And if you read across Protestant historians and other and some secular historians as well, the date that they say when the beginning of the papacy was, was 606 AD. Now it developed even further. It became not just a religious power, but also a civil power, and accrued and accumulated more and more powers to itself. I would encourage people, if you have the Institutes of the Christian Religion, read chapter 7 of book 4 which uh, talks about the beginning and rise of the Romish papacy. Now, in paragraph 4 of that chapter, he's talking about the controversy here of the universal bishop, of the title of universal bishop. Gregory, this is what Calvin writes, Gregory does not allege that he is deprived of a right which belonged to him. He's talking about this between John IV of Constantinople and him. He didn't say this right belonged to him, in fact, what he says, but he, uh, Calvin goes on to write, but he strongly insists that the appellation is so, is profane, no, blasphemous, no, the forerunner of Antichrist. This is Gregory, and, and notice these views were around, Tertullian had it, there was a number of other ch church fathers, I believe Cyprian, Chrysostom, this view that this little horn would emerge, the Antichrist would emerge as soon as the Roman Empire, he and that what uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, would be taken out of the way, and then shall that man of sin, that wicked one, be revealed. Gregory writes, The whole church falls from its state if he who is called universal falls. So if, if this church, the church of Rome, has its universal bishop, According to Gregory, once that man falls, the whole thing falls. So the rock of Romanism is the man of sin, the son of perdition. It is very difficult to bear patently that one who is our brother and fellow bishop, and he's talking about John IV of Constantinople, should alone be called bishop, while others are despised. But in his pride of his what else is intimated, but that the days of Antichrist are already near, for he is imitating him, who, despising the company of angels, attempt to ascend the pinnacle of greatness. This is Gregory writing this now. They go on to write, for if one patriarch is called universal, it is, so, it is derogatory to the name of patriarch and others. He's saying they're above all the others. And this happened in the 7th century. They go on to write, But far be it from any, imp from any Christian mind to wish to aggregate to himself that which in any degree, however slight, impair the honor of his brethren. To consent to that impious term is nothing else than to lose the faith. 
what we owe to the pr- preservation of the unity of faith is one thing. What we owe to the suppression of pride is another. I speak with confidence for everyone that calls himself or desires to be called priest, universal priest, is by his pride a forerunner of Antichrist. The then Bishop of Rome, he says, to read it one more time, I speak with confidence, this is Gregory, for, an, for everyone that calls himself or desires to be called universal priest, which is what the Pope of Rome today says, is by his pride a forerunner of Antichrist.